In this tutorial, we'll have a look at how to use premult and unpremult in Nuke and how important they are for the color correction workflows. I've got three images here and this is what we're going to be working with. As a short preview, I'll hook the viewer up to these. We've got read node 1, which is my background and this is in RGB format. We've got read node 2, which is an image of a dragon and this is also in RGB format. Finally we've got read node 3 which is the alpha for the dragon. Now if you're new to Nuke you may be wondering why this alpha is red. You've probably seen alphas before but most likely these were black and white. Essentially this comes down to how the image was rendered from 3D. If it's only been rendered as an alpha channel and just as the one channel and it isn't rendered as an RGB image then the alpha channel just automatically gets dumped into the first channel which is almost always the red channel. So if I come in here and view my red channel of the image you can see that what we do get is the black and white information. If we go into the alpha channel there's nothing there and that's because it's being stored in the red channel. So Nuke handles this a little bit differently to what you might expect so for now just keep in mind that the alpha for the dragon is in the red channel. The premult and unpremult nodes in Nuke can be overlooked by beginners because the effects of using them or the lack of using them can create other outcomes which may not seem too apparent or important at least until you get close or you make a really large change or if you unwittingly perform something called a double premult which we'll come on to later. The results of these can be either subtle or obvious but failure to deal with them will create major problems further down the node tree or further down the VFX pipeline. Premultiplication is a term which refers to the maths that's happening behind the scenes when you're placing a foreground image over a background image. So let's do this now. Let's pre place this dragon on top of the background image. Normally in order to do this in new we use something called a merge node. So I'll hit the tab key and type in merge. Then I connect up so the B pipe is going to the background image and the A pipe is going to the dragon. Now you can see that we're already getting a pre-multiplication around the edges. However, we're also getting a strange mix in other areas of the image, indicating the, that the maths are incorrect. Now I need to explain why the composite looks like this before you actually add the alpha. So we'll flip the viewer to look at the alpha while we look while we actually discuss this a little bit more. I'll also switch to the red channels or, or from the red channel so that we'll sorry ba 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 I'll switch to the red channel so that we're looking at the black and white representation of the alpha. So pre-multiplication is about getting the foreground image on top of the background. The key to this is that there's a third image present and that image is usually the alpha and that's what we're seeing here. The alpha image or the alpha channel is made up of black and white and sometimes as in this case also gradients of grey. Okay, So areas that are totally transparent are depicted as black, areas that are totally opaque are depicted as white and areas that are semi-transparent are depicted as a shade of grey, the value of which is determined by the extent of the transparency. So for example, a pixel that is almost but not quite fully transparent will be at the darkest level of grey, whereas a pixel that is almost but not quite fully opaque will be at the brightest level of grey. Now Newt measures this in values ranging from 0 to 1, with 1 being the brightest white and 0 being the darkest black. This is a really powerful feature in Newt because it provides conditions for com completely accurate maths. Now in maths we know that 1 times any number equals the same number. So for example 1 times 10 equals 10, 1 times 5 equals 5, etc. And we also know that 0 times any number equals 0, so 2 times 0 equals 0, etc, etc. So with this in mind, if these colours have, have been assigned those values, then this is where we start to get uh, into this math equation. And this is what's happening whenever we merge pixels from one image over the top of pixels from another image. 
and this is where and and its pre-multiplication is the process that actually undertakes the maths so we automatically get a pre-multiplication when when we merge these images together it's just not going to be the right kind of math and in this case it results in quite an obvious effect where the dragon is semi-transparent so if we look at the RGB values here what's happening is the black areas in this render of our dragon are becoming transparent but the lighter or the closer to white areas are still visible so it's trying to use its own image information to create the dragon for us but clearly this is not what we want we want it to use the alpha channel to define that so we need to use a node called a shuffle copy node to bring this alpha into our calculation so I'm going to hit the tab key and type in shuffle copy now when you're using a shuffle copy you need to take the input alpha from the one pipe and pass it down the alpha channel and then output it to the number two pipe via the alpha channel as well now I can hook my A pipe from the merge into the output of the shuffle copy now you can see that we didn't actually get any changes to the viewer and this is because the, alpha, the shuffle copy is actually passing the alpha channel down the alpha column of the input from the one pipe and it's passing it out via the, uh, via the alpha row of the input from the two, number two pipe but we know that our alpha is not in the alpha channel we know it's in the red channel therefore we just move the checker over from the alpha to the red column on the one pipe input so it, input, it inputs it from the red channel and it outputs it into the alpha channel via pipe 2 and now we get the correct image so what's happening here is that the white values of my alpha when they're multiplied by the foreground image and I'm just gonna toddle I'm just gonna kinda toddle back and forth between these two while we see this the white values or as you can see those red values because we're dumping it into the alpha channel are being multiplied by the foreground so they're preserving or not changing this area where it's coinciding with the red so pre pre preserving those to be fully opaque effectively now the black values of my alpha when they're overlapped in this area so for example this black area outside of my dragon they're going to equal zero which makes them transparent so now when I look at the merge we've got transparency outside of the dragon any other areas that were not black can be seen such as the tip of the wing so essentially this is how it works and this is compositing at its most basic of levels however because this operation involves maths a lot of people don't really take the time to learn how it affects things further down the line once you start doing things like color correction and this is where things can start to get tricky and understanding how it works behind the scenes is really going to help you understand why a color correction can cause a massive breakdown in the way that it's causing the maths to be calculated so let's move the dragon side of the composite across and we'll add a grade node so that we can do a little bit of color correction okay the first thing I want to do is crank up the offset this is one of the telltale signs that something's going wrong with the maths in your composite you can see that the grade is affecting my background image even though the grade node is before the merge and it's even on the opposite side of the uh, of the composite pipe it's on the it's on the A side of the pipe whereas the background is on the B side of the pipe okay I'll just connect the viewer directly to the grade node so we can actually have a look at why this is happening so what is happening here is that the black areas are being lifted and because of that they're no longer equal to zero they're equal to some value between 0 and 1 so when this side of the composite merges over the background it washes out the transparent areas it can't pre-multiply correctly because the number values are wrong so the way to deal with this is basically to hold this calculation off by adding an unpremult node before the grade so I'll select the shuffle copy and then I'll hit tab and type in unpremult to add an unpremult node so we're using this to tell the comp not to pre-multiply just yet so we're going to unpre-multiply then we're going to apply a color correction and then finally we're going to pre-multiply after the color correction 
So I'll put a pre mulch node in now at the other side of the grade. And once I've done that, you can see now that the background is unaffected by the changes that were made inside that grade node. Now this is always what you're trying to achieve. You never want your background to be affected by any operations applied on the foreground side of the composite. Now bear in mind that if we just applied a very slight offset, this could easily have been missed. If I dial this offset down now, and then I disable the pre mult and un -pre -mult. Now you can't really see a huge change now. You only see it when you crank it way up. So the lesson there is that you have to be careful when you're making sort of minor changes and not having the pre mult and un -pre -mult in place because that's how you how, that's how you end up with this issue. Okay, I'm just going to crank the offset up again so that I can we can look at another gotcha. And this is where people tend to add a pre mult node after the color correction, but they don't add an un -pre mult node before the color correction. And I just want to use this example to look at the difference and why this should be avoided. So with that offset applied, everything looks okay. The color correct is affecting the dragon. There's no apparent effect on the background. And no matter what parameter values are changed inside the grade node, we only see the result on the foreground. However, if we get a little bit closer in, we can start to see a problem. Look at the edges in this area, or here, or especially in this area where there's lots of semi-transparent values. What's happening here is the foreground's being pre-multiplied twice, or so-called double pre-multiplication. We have a pre-multiplication before the merge, and then the merge recognizes an attempt to lay one set of pixels over another and therefore attempts a second pre-multiplication. So the math calculation is undertaken twice, and the result of that is darkening of the pixels around the edges, more visibly where the, uh, the semi-transparent pixels reside. So if we add in the un -pre -mult, and as I do that, just watch the edges along that edge of the wing. And you can see the difference, that major difference in the coloration. So in case you missed it, just watch when I disable the un -pre -mult node. So you can see there's a big difference in the darkness that we get in those areas. So that's clearly incorrect. You don't want that dark halo around your image. So you always want to un -pre multiply then add in your color corrections and then pre multiply again after. Now I probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to do a color correction as extreme as this, so I'll reset the grade node. Instead I'll do something a little bit more subtle, something like this. So a very, little ch a very subtle change. I'll also set the black point and the white point to plausible areas inside the background image. And you can see already that the dragon looks much better overall. You can see how nice it looks within, with the un -pre -mult and the pre -mult nodes in place. Now one final point is that you do not have to add, add these two nodes in to get the same effect. It's certainly helpful to use these when you're getting started in Nuke because the principle is easier to understand, it's easier to see the, the context of the flow and now they're both visible within the node tree itself. However, when you get a little bit more familiar with the concept, you can control pre-multiplication directly inside color correct nodes themselves. So we'll start with the grade node. So to show this, I'll close the un -pre -mult and pre -mult node properties and I'll also disable the actual nodes in the tree. Now in the grade node, I'll turn the gamma up again just so that you can see that big issue that we were getting in the background. What we can do instead is we can use this un -pre by by parameter. So we can use the drop down list to select the RGB alpha. So this is telling it that I want to un -pre multiply and then pre multiply. This will give the same result as having the nodes on either side of the color correct node. So you can do this either way, just not both at the same time. 
You can also use this option with the color correct node. To show this, I'll just add this color correct node in. And I will crank up the saturation and the gain. However, when we look down the color correct node properties, we don't see the unpre multiply by parameter. It's there, it's just not stored inside this tab. Instead, we have to go inside the ranges tab. Again, if we choose unpre multiply by and we select the RGB alpha, that will fix any issues that you might get around the edge from the color correction. So in this particular case, we've got two, two nodes affecting the color of the dragon. Both are being unpre multiplied and then pre multiplied. Okay, this color correct is a little bit extreme, so let's uh, let's disable it. I'll also bring the grade values down so we get a much nicer color, particularly on the gamma. Okay, so hopefully this video has helped your understanding of how Nuke merges pixel data from two sources together and how the alpha channel factors into that equation. Also how you can manage the, your color correction workflow without any disruption from the pre-multiplication math.